Okay, so today we are working with the 25 ounce hydro flask from Hog Tumblers. Um, we are going to do a start to finish cut. So the very first thing that I actually did off camera, but I took me some electrical tape, some electrical tape, and I wrapped it around the rim because I don't want any spray paint or anything getting on it. So I completely wrapped it around the rim. So the very first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna sand. So I have an 80 grit, let me flip that the right way. I have an 80 grit sanding block. So we're just gonna go ahead and get that nice and scuffed up. You know, you don't want, it's not like you're trying to sand layers off, but you do want to scuff it up real good so that that spray paint can adhere as well as the epoxy. So we want to give it something to grip onto. You know, get that bottom. I think that looks pretty good, nice and scuffed up. Let's go ahead and get that edge though. We don't want to miss that. Okay, so now that we've done this, I am going to base paint this with white spray paint. Um, to get the little shavings off, I usually just spray it with a little alcohol and then just kind of wipe it off. So I keep like little alcohol spray bottles around. At least I try to keep them around. Sometimes they elude me. Um, another option is a baby wipe, but I will say that sometimes with a baby wipe, you do risk getting some of that residue from the baby wipe on it. So I'm just gonna wipe that off. Let that dry for a bit. And then we're gonna go ahead and jump on over to spray paint too. That's how Okay, okay. So, now we have our tumbler. Okay, and we're gonna go ahead and spray paint it. I'm gonna use flat Rust-Oleum. Rust-Oleum's flat white. And we're gonna try to do even burst going down the tumbler. All right, so I'm gonna take that up a little bit. Get that right out. Okay, get it out. So what I like to do, and I'm sorry if I sound a little muffled, it's the mask. But I like to try to just do a line of the burst, short burst, and a line. And then I'll do just more than one coat so that I can make sure that it's covered really well, but also that it's not gonna drip. So I let this first coat dry for a bit. And then I'm going to run with coat number two. God bless you. Okay, guys. So now we're going on for that second coat. Okay. And I'm trying to be like a couple inches away so that I can get it really good, get good coverage, but not be too close to make it drip. Cause especially if you're gonna be like doing white. Now, since I'm not doing, since I'm doing other colors on top of this, we can leave that there, that base is pretty good. Cause we're gonna do a couple of different blues. Because the person who this is for, their favorite color is blue. So just a little quick dry, and then we're gonna go on with the blue. Also, be careful not to touch it like I just did. So no problem, we're gonna kind of let me go with the flow with this one. So we're just gonna do our own little thing. I like that, and then. We're gonna grab a couple of other blues. This is more of a navy color. It's a little light. Let's try to get that going good. Some more color. It's not really pigmented, <clears throat> but. This one is pretty much empty. So we're not getting a lot out of here. 
something. Okay. So we just go on there with a few different blue colors. One of our blues kind of ran out. I prefer Rust-Oleum. More so because I have less issues out of Rust-Oleum. So this is blue, but it's like a dark, like matte ink blue. And then I'm just gonna kind of mix those colors with the light blue. Let's get that more color coming out though. Okay, so far so good. I'm liking the colors. So I'm gonna grab a few more blue colors that mix up with this. And I'll be back. Okay, so these colors are actually really similar. So we need something to break that up. A lot of these colors are similar. I guess I have a type. I like light blue colors, huh? Now this is more of a green in my opinion, rather than a blue. So now we're going to do like a little dip in some water that has, that I've sprayed paint, that I've sprayed some spray paint into. You see down here, I have a bucket of water with spray paint in it. And I'm just going to kind of like dip this in it and see what we get. You know, so just move it around. Not so bad. I think we need a little more color to the water though. So this is just water that I'm spray painting. Okay. Sometimes these tops are ridiculously hard to get off. Great for keeping kids out of them. Not necessarily great for you. Let's just sit this down for a bit. All right, we're gonna just spray that water some more. Get that water some good color, all right? Get it some good color. I'm gonna add a little bit of white. And then we're gonna get our dip on. Okay, so far, I like it. And I think now I'm gonna do the Dawn Power Wash method. Only because it's not really, this water, I'm using that cup, is not necessarily the thickest, <laughs> um, the, the deepest water, it's not a lot. So because it's not a lot of water, I'm not getting a lot of what I'm looking for. But that's okay. All right, so we're gonna go on with the blue lagoon. And then we're gonna rinse it off in the cup. Okay, not a big difference because I kind of sprayed the whole cup down. And then I'm just gonna quickly wipe the soap off lightly, y'all. I don't make too many marks. I get some of that soap off. Okay. 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 And then I'm gonna pour water over it. And then we get that power wash effect. 
after pouring the water on it. And this is where I'll have some of the decals at. Let the cup dry. It's over here drying. Please don't mind the craft area. It's a little crazy. So now we are at the point where we're going to go ahead and mix up the epoxy. We did um, the epoxy that has equal parts of the hardener and equal parts of resin. So right here, you know, we're just doing a quick mix. We're going to mix it up. We actually have two tumblers on the turner today. And we're trying not to mix it up too fast, of course. But since we're putting it on a tumbler, we can mix it a little bit faster than we normally would. So here we have our tumbler, as well as our second tumbler that needs to be epoxy. One that I've been working on as well. I really like these Hydro Flask cups. They're really cute. Um, they come with two lids. They're from Hog. And, you know, I, I think they're really nice. I like both the lids. You have the one with the straw, and then you have the kind of one with the pop top. As you can see here, I'm having a little wiggle movement going on, which is due to the foam that I'm using. It has, like, a little rip in the middle. So they're not really the greatest size for these Hydro Flats. I would definitely try your best to make sure that you are making sure they are on there better. Making sure that your cup isn't having a bunch of movement and it's not leaning off of it. Because if it's leaning, then you might end up with a pooling in a certain spot. I got lucky. There was no pool at all. But I would definitely suggest making sure that, you know, those tumblers are completely level. Use this as a how not to <laughs> in this particular point. Don't do it this way. Don't have to <laughs> lift and turn like you see me going on here. But so basically... We're just, we're putting on those coats. We're making sure it's nice and even, making sure there's enough coverage. I don't want to feel the decal on the one that I'm on now. And I just want to make sure it's, it's nice and flat so that we can put that decal on the blue one that we're working on also. So now you have me running the torch across the tumbler, just trying to make sure that we don't have any micro bubbles. Because once the micro bubbles cure and the cup cures, you're going to have a bunch of lumps that you have to sand down because you weren't able to get them all out. So I try to get them all out with the torch or heat gun will work also. So now here we are getting ready to print our file. I use Canva to put every single one of the pictures um, on one sheet of paper so I don't waste any paper. And we're using the printable vinyl to do this. So I go ahead and I use the print as PDF because it says it's better for printing. And then I print it out on my printer. And when you're using glossy paper, you're actually going to have an issue with using print and cut. So I cut it myself. Now, unfortunately here, part of the video got lost. So you were only able to see me putting on the sixers and where I put everything else on. The cut part of the video and me adding the rest of the decals, unfortunately, was a little bit lost. But now we are in our Cricut Design Space and we are going to make the name portion of this cup we're going to use the monogramming tool that Cricut offers you do not have to use the monogramming tool i just figured this was a great opportunity to use it 
Now, um, you can just go ahead and find these fonts yourself and make the make the initials the size that you need to make it. But since we're doing it with his nickname DJ, we're gonna go ahead and just try out the monogram tool. Then we're gonna go ahead and get that sized up to the size we would like to make it. I like to toy with the aspect ratio by unlocking it so that I can make it longer or make it wider just to see what's going to look best for my cup. You know, especially if I have a big section that it's going on, I want to make it a little longer so it fits. And so we don't have any mu in too much blank space. So now we're going to go ahead and, you know, just finish that sizing that up, like I said. And then we're going to take that over to the Cricut machine and we're going to go ahead and make it. Make sure that you're to make sure that you have your vinyl already um ready to go whatever colors you're going to use and then we're just going to kind of go through these next steps where you're watching me put the vinyl on and add it to the Cricut machine so here we are getting our Cricut Mac prepared to go into our Cricut machine. I chose black vinyl. It's nice and bold. It will show up great on the cup. And, you know, it's for a little boy, so I figured, you know, let's go ahead and just go with black since the cup's already different shades of blue. So now we're just gonna go ahead and load this into the Cricut machine. Let that run through. And I went ahead and made this a little bit faster so that we don't have to wait the entire time that it's going through the machine. But for those of you who are still trying to learn how to use your machine, that flashing button was my load, the one that has the two arrows, and then the one that with the C is the one to go ahead and get started after you have loaded. Once it's done, it's gonna go ahead and let you know you can unload, which is that, one, that button with the two arrows, one at the top, one at the bottom. And that one will begin flashing and you will know that it is time to unload your decal. So now we're going to go ahead and weed our decal. Now, typically when I'm doing a project like this, I do try to have maybe some smaller objects on the project as well so that I don't waste so much vinyl. But for the sake of this video, we did unfortunately waste some vinyl so that we could get this video done and I didn't have anything that I was using black for to go ahead and put on with this one. But this is a pretty quick weed. You know, we're just gonna go ahead and remove that outside and really remove those little lines so that you can see the definition of that decal. And here we go, it is pretty much done. Now, we're gonna go ahead from this point and take our transfer tape. Now, I get this roll from Amazon. It um, It's a little bit more cost effective than just buying a whole bunch of the Cricut rolls. I do like the Cricut transfer tape as well but this one we have in, um, from Amazon I will try to link that below if it's still on there but we just go ahead and peel that transfer tape off and place it on our decal make sure it is nice and flat if you have your tools please go ahead and run that scraper up and down so that you can peel it up to make it an easier peel up for you if you're having issues try to run it across it again so that you can pull it up so now we got our cup we are going to go ahead and place that decal down, making sure that we have it in the right spot, a spot that works for us. Now we're laying that down, and you want to make sure that the decal is laying nice and flat. You don't want it to have any air bubbles. You want to be very delicate with it when you're peeling off your transfer tape so you don't rip it, because if you rip it, then you have to either try to fix it or go ahead and do another decal. Sometimes when you rip it and you try to fix it, that part that you try to fix might come right, go right ahead and peel right up. So when I rip it, I typically will go back and get another decal. So now we're back to the tumbler turner, putting another coat of epoxy on top. We're again doing the two part epoxy resin where we have one part hardeners to one part of epoxy, one part resin so that we can mix that together. Then we're gonna go ahead and smooth that over those cups. Now, let me stress this to you, make sure your decals are flat before you do this. You can even seal them in with some acrylic sealer and let it dry. But just to make sure that your decals do not peel up during this process. You know, re resin heats up. We just basically essentially put stickers on it, on this cup, and resin heats up. So that heat could cause this to peel up. So that's why you wanna make sure that you have those decals really adhered 
so that you don't end up with a situation where you have a peel up and now you either have to get it completely off your cup or sand it down to the point where you can't see that it tried to peel up. It all depends on what the mess up is. Um, next time I get a mess up, I'll probably do a quick video to show you how I fix it or if it's trash or a fix. So maybe we'll do one of those videos. Let me know in the comment section below if that's something that you'd be interested in, trash or fix video. So now we're just gonna kinda of go ahead and finish putting the epoxy on these cups and then I will go ahead and show you guys the finished product. And here is our finished product. We use the 20, five ounce hydro flask from hog tumblers and it came out absolutely gorgeous now here's a quick video from nyla who was not able to be a part of our tutorial today but she wanted to show you guys her nezuko costume her favorite tv show is demon slayer so she wanted us to go ahead and show you guys her wig and her running around pretending to be Nezuko. If you guys like this video and you like this tutorial and you would like to see more, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you again for tuning in with us and have a wonderful, crazy, beautiful week.